Welcome to Auto Chatter. Today's episode is about the Nissan Titan. Named after mighty Greek gods, Nissan was out to show Toyota and the domestic competition how they do full size. Was it successful? Let's find out. As always, facts, opinion, and speculation will be given. Please like and subscribe and comment if you enjoyed the video. Now let's appease the Greek gods with a tale about this four-wheeled Titan. In the 1990s, Nissan witnessed Toyota selling the first Japanese full-size truck for North America. Well, calling the T100 a full-size was a bit of a stretch, but it was larger than a Nissan hardbody. Unfortunately, in the 90s, especially the later part of the decade, it was not a good time for Nissan. They were hemorrhaging cash, and even if they wanted to build a larger truck, that wasn't an option. Nissan barely scraped a budget together to create the Xterra, and it was largely based off the Frontier versus creating an all-new vehicle from scratch. With a bankruptcy looming in the late 90s, French car company Renault stepped in to bail out Nissan in 1999. The company wasted no time planning future products, and one of them was a full-size truck for North America. Development started in 1999, about six months after the Nissan-Renault alliance. For the 2001 North American Auto Show, Nissan unveiled a radical concept called the Alpha T. I think it looks pretty wild today, so Auto Chatter in 2001 probably thought it was even wilder. Nissan was announcing they were going back to making big SUVs and trucks, and they were spending a billion dollars building their second vehicle manufacturing plant in the U.S. in Canton, Mississippi. Nissan designed an all-new platform for this truck, but it was a modular in design. It was a fully ladder boxed, and things like the suspension mounting points were high and tucked out of the way for improved off-roading. They called the platform an F-Alpha. This new platform would also be used on Nissan's and Infiniti's upcoming full-size SUVs, the Armada and QX56. It would also be used on the next generation Frontier, Pathfinder, and Xterra later too. I'm sure Nissan looked hard at Toyota and the domestic's full-size products and took notes. The Toyota Tundra debuted for the 2000 model year and was a nice truck, but a little smaller than the competitors then. Nissan wanted to come out of the gate swinging, so this truck would not be a 7th 8th scale full-size truck. For the 2004 model year, the new Nissan Titan is here. The final product was quite tame in appearance compared to the Alpha T concept, but they borrowed a few styling bits from it. The V-Motion grille and general shape of the cab can be seen if you squint hard enough. Drivetrain options were vast as Nissan offered one engine and transmission to choose from. The engine was an all-new 32-valve 5.6-liter V8 with 305 horsepower, and all Titans had a 5-speed automatic. That was 5 more horsepower than a 2004 F-150 with the big 5.4-liter V8 and 65 more ponies than a same-year V8 Toyota Tundra. Towing capacity was available up to 9,400 pounds properly equipped. That was about the same as an F-150 and 2,300 pounds more than a Tundra. The Titan could haul a Mazda Miata and weight more than uh, what a Tundra could muster then. Titan also had other competitive advantages at launch. It had the best-in-class headroom and a crew cab interior space. It also had the best four-wheel drive ground clearance and approach angle. Body styles available was limited though. No regular cabs for the first-gen Titans were made. You could opt for a king cab or crew cab. There was no bed length options initially, and you got a six and a half foot bed on the king cabs and a five and a half footer on the crew. Four trims to choose from, with the base XE, later called an S, if you like rolling down your own windows manually, but had AC and a CD player standard. This is the 21st century after all. Prices started around 22,400 in 2004, which is about 36,000 today. That undercut a comparable V8 Tundra extended cab then by almost a thousand bucks. But you could buy a V6 Tundra regular cab for thousands less. 
the SE or SV later uh, was the next trim level up and this was the one with the power windows, locks, cruise control, 18 inch alloy wheels, heated mirrors and other nice touches. Basically kind of like buying an XLT F-150 then as it was a middle market value package. The expensive ones were the LE models as you got the leather and other Luxo touches. Nissan also uh, offered Pro 4X Titans later to cater to the off-road crowd. Titan sales for 2004 was almost 84,000 units sold. Not bad, but not as good as the Tundra's 112,000 number, and both were far behind the domestic full-sizers. 05 sold slightly better, almost hitting 87,000, and spoiler alert, this is the best year the Titan has ever seen to this day. 06 finished in the low 70s, and 07 was in the mid 60s sales wise. 08 offered long wheelbase versions of both body style Titans, with long bed king cabs with a bed exceeding 8 foot, or a crew cab with a, a length of s over 7. Sales dipped hard though to 34,000 or so. The economic crisis of 2008 was taking its toll and I'm sure the new for 2007 Tundra wasn't helping either. It was all grown up size wise now and offered more power than the Titan's V8 which was now rated at 317. The Titan got a mild facelift for 2008. Unfortunately other than a few changes here and there the truck was largely unchanged from this point through 2015. 09 through 2012 their sales hovered in the 20 to 22,000 range. 2013 couldn't hit 16,000, and 14 and 15 models were around 12,000 sold. That's pretty bad. Nissan had the uh, largely unchanged for such a long time to the point where whatever competitive advantages it may have had in 2004 were gone. What else hurt it was the limited powertrain and body options. I've personally seen quite a few first gen Titans with some serious mileage on them still running great. It's just a shame not many people bought them to experience it. Nissan didn't intend for this Titan model to be sold for so long. The truck wasn't setting the world on fire sales wise from the start and Nissan was making a deal with Chrysler to build the next Titan for them. It would have been a rebadged and restyled Ram pickup as that's uh, a lot cheaper to do than designing your own all new truck from scratch. The plan was for this truck to debut for the 2011 model year. Chrysler would have had a few rebadged Nissan cars they were going to sell as part of the deal too. The 2008 economic crisis basically killed this partnership. The details released publicly were brief, but from what I've read this proposal was no longer in the best interests of both Nissan and Chrysler. So we get the same truck for another half decade while Nissan goes it alone designing another Titan. And Chrysler sold rebadged Fiat cars here like the Dodge Dart and Chrysler 200 that have already come and gone. The new 2016 Titan was a welcome change to Nissan fans. Nissan's all new big truck offered more body styles two engines, and even a semi-heavy duty model. King cab and crew cabs carry over, but now they no longer have long bed versions of them. A regular cab is also now available. There was rumors of a V6 base engine for the regular cabs, but that never happened. Wouldn't have been hard as the Nissan NV commercial vans had a 4 liter V6 standard and its shared platforms with the Titans. All Titans that were not XD models, I'll chat about in a minute, had a revised version of the previous 5.6 liter V8 with direct injection and other improvements. Power is now rated at 390 and a 7 speed automatic was now available. Trim levels started with the Base S, Middle of the Road SV, 4 wheel drive only Pro 4X, SL which was the semi fancy and Platinum Reserve that was the luxury model. Regular cabs only could be had in the two lower trims as they were positioned as work trucks. The king cabs were not available in the SL or platinum trims and crew cabs could be had in all of them. The new XD Titans were the heavy duty models. It would be something slotted in between say an F-150 and F-250. 
if Ford made an F200, the XD Titan would have been a competitor for it. The frame was heavier duty and shared with the 2500 series and the commercial van. The trucks are noticeably longer than their non-XD cousins too. The big thing uh, with going XD was you got another engine option besides the 5.6 liter V8. You could opt for a 5 liter Cummins V8 turbo diesel with 310 horsepower and 555 pounds of torque. At one point there was news stories that the Toyota Tundra was going to offer the same engine too, but that never happened. Towing capacity on the XD diesel was rated up to 12,300 pounds, which was a couple thousand more than what a regular Titan could be equipped to handle. So how did this new Titan do? Is Ford or Chevy scared? Nope. 2016 moved about 22,000 of them, but 2017 and 18, they broke the 50,000 barrier, and 2019 drops to 31,500 or so. This is a good truck, but not many folks are biting. Nissan even has the best full-size truck warranty in the business. You get a 5-year, 100,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty on all Titans, even through today. That's pretty strong as uh, everyone else's bumper to bumper is 3 years or 36,000 miles in its class. Just think about it. At 99,000 miles, the radio knob falls off and it's covered. Now think of all the many gizmos modern vehicles have that can fail past 3 years. For 2020, the Titan gets a refresh and some options go away. The diesels are dropped, as is the regular cab models. You can't get an XD King Cab anymore either, so it's Crew Cab only now. Horsepower is up to an even 400 with the now one engine choice, and there's a new 9-speed automatic standard. Nissan lowered the rear end gearing on all trims, as they can now, having more gears in the transmission to play with. There's improvements inside and a bigger infotainment screen available, but it's not an iMac screen like some vehicles have. The standard safety stuff increases as all Titans now have lane departure warning, high beam assist, auto emergency braking with pedestrian detection, rear auto braking, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert, traffic sign detection, and forward collision warning, all standard. Intelligent cruise control is also an option too. 20 and 21 models sold in the 26,000 to 27,000 range. For 2022, sales dipped to about 15,000. Maybe the pandemic was a factor. Titan sales were dropped in Canada after 2021 model year due to weak sales. The truck's future in the U.S. isn't looking good as rumors say don't expect another one and the current model may be gone. Uh, the next model year or two. It's kind of sad as this truck seems to be the last holdout of the traditional full-size truck. Some of the competitors are offering small displacement four and six cylinder turbocharged engines for their big trucks. The new Tundra doesn't even have a V8 anymore in favor of a turbo V6. These engines are powerful, but that big understressed V8 in the Titan could very well outlast them. The current Titan gets 21 miles per gallon highway compared to the Tundra's 24. Even the hybrid one gets that, by the way. The 2023 Titan starts just under $40,000. It's a great truck in my opinion, but it doesn't really excel in any given category today. It's not the most powerful, but has the most standard power. It doesn't tow more than anyone else, but all trims can do over 9,000 pounds. If you like your dash to look like a Best Buy flat screen TV display, the Titan probably isn't for you. But if you're looking for a solid V8 truck with a fantastic warranty, and that Nissan dealer is willing to negotiate, maybe a Titan is worth a look. Anyway, this has been my Titan Chatter. I hope you liked it. Please give a like and subscribe to let me know. Until next time, Chatter out.